Yo, welcome to the channel, the channel called Keep Low. You know what I mean? Thank you for rocking out with Keep Low. I appreciate you all. And I am Lashim the God. You know, the company is called Keep Low. You can go to www.keeplowproduction to get your Keep Low Production shirts. Yo, like and share this fucking video. You dig? Hit me with a thumbs up. Yeah, dig? I'm giving you that real shit. And if you don't know me, I do videos on street legends. And, you know, I give you knowledge that'll help you elevate your life. So, once again, go to www.keeplowproductions.com and just fuck with me. Last name of God. Peace. Yo, peace, y'all. What it do? Last name of God and Keep Low, we are definitely in effect. Yo, check it, um... I just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers who's rocking out with Keep Low. Yo, we building this channel and we getting it right for y'all, you feel me? And I'm giving y'all factual shit. But yo, check it. Um, Y'all like my Gucci glasses? Check them joints out. Little Gucci glasses, Gucci hat, little Gucci shirt. Shit ain't about nothing, but you know, y'all like my shit. But yo, shout out to y'all. But yo, check it. Today, I want to do this video on Alpo Martinez. Let's just talk about Alpo for a minute, all right? Now, check it. For those of you who don't know, Alpo Martinez was a drug kingpin from Harlem, New York. He was a multi-kilo distributor. Now, I'm talking about when Alpo first got in the game. You know what I mean? Because you all know who Rich Porter is. And if you don't, Rich Porter was a guy that was affiliated with Alpo, a lot of people would classify them as friends. But I just think they were two dudes who were getting money together. I think, don't get me wrong, I think they were somewhat fond of each other. But just in my opinion, um, Alpo Martinez was a little bit narcissistic. So, you know what I mean? Um, he did everything surrounded about himself. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's my perception of him. And don't get me wrong. I think that he was able to be a good person and he was a good person in certain aspects. Now, a lot of people would differentiate with me and they would disagree. You feel me? Okay. Getting back to what I was saying, you know what I mean? Um, you know that Rich Porter was on financially and in the drug game. Well, I won't say in the drug game, but he was a multi-kilo distributor when Alpo wasn't really deep in the game like that. You understand what I'm saying? Probably at that time, Alpo was doing this thing with Randy Love. And you all know about him doing the juxes. You know, if you don't know what a jux is, that's when people get robbed. But he was doing juxes with Randy Love, allegedly. You feel me? But um, the thing that I want to get into today is some of the murders that Alpo was allegedly involved in. Right? Okay. Let's deal with that situation for a quick minute. All right. Y'all know that Alpo was a drug dealer and he went out to um Washington, D.C. and he was getting some out of town money, you feel me? So he was doing his thing when he got out to D.C. And y'all all know that he got into a little bit of confrontations where people tried to kidnap him or, you know, come at him crazy. And, you know, that's like anywhere else. Um, When... People got shit established in a certain town, or even if they don't got it established in a certain town, and you from a different town, and you try to come into their town, even if they're not getting money, a lot of people just don't like that because you're not from their town. And that's, you know, people are territorial as human beings. Well, anyway, it's alleged that Alpo had a hand in killing Michael Frey Salters. You know what I mean? Now, the reason why I put his name with that because um, I heard that he was one of the people 
that wasn't comfortable with Alpo being in DC accumulating funds. Cause like I said, people are territorial. So they probably, he, I don't know what he was thinking, but just my perception of what Michael Frey Salters was thinking, he was probably thinking this New York nigga out here in our town trying to bag all the bitches and just do him. It's not like that. This our town, that kind of shit. You know what I mean? But I don't want to make that statement as factual because I don't know him personally, but this is just my perception of it from you know, being active in the game at a certain time and just knowing the mechanics and dynamics of how the drug game operates, right? And um, it's alleged that Alpo Martinez found out, and this is in Alpo's own words, you could check this on the internet, but Alpo said that Michael Frey Salters, he was allegedly getting his... Um, material or whatever from Rayfit. And if you don't know who Rayfit was, Rayfit was the real shit. Like, even though he turned the federal informant and a lot of people would classify him as a bird now, but at the time when he was really active getting money in Washington, D.C., a dude named Rayful Edmonds, he was getting mad bricks. He, cause he had a direct connect with the Colombian cartel. You feel me? Uh, this is all alleged, but um, the feds is, is alleging this. And um, he even copped out to that or something. And look, you see like Alpo and people on Alpo and Richenham level, they probably was getting like 50, 70 bricks, maybe 100. But Rayful Edmonds was getting thousands of bricks. You feel me? So look, Back to what I was saying, um, Michael Frey, I heard he, you know, got dry on the work for a little bit when Rafe got gobbled up and gobbled up. If you don't know what that means in my terminology, gobbled up is mean when you get arrested by any authorities, you know what I mean? You got gobbled up. But anyway, so Rafe ended up getting gobbled up by the feds. Now, let's just stay on Rafe for a quick minute. Rafe Edmonds. Rafe was a dude, this is how he was different on another level than Al Pond Richenham. He was getting thousands of bricks per month. You feel me? Thousands with the S. So that's a next level, not just a motherfucker that's getting 50, 60 bricks. You feel me? Okay, so it's alleged by Al Pond Martinez that Michael Frey Salters made a hit list. And another guy that was working for um, Michael Frey Salters, he knew about the hit list. But at the same time, remember I told you that Michael Frey Salters caught a dry spell on his work because um, Rayful got gobbled up. You feel me? So he was in between moves and making moves to get himself back in a good position like he was when he was getting hit by Rayful Edmonds, you feel me? So Alpo was taking care of a guy that worked for Michael Frey Salters. And he ended up telling Alpo Martinez that Michael Frey Salters had a hit list. So Alpo was like, he got to go, you feel me? And Alpo ended up allegedly giving this guy a half a bird, which is a half a brick kilo, you know, just for educational purposes. Alpo ended up giving him a half a brick and him and another dude rolled up on Michael Frey Salters because he remember he was working for him. So he had a degree of trust for him. Michael Frey Salters had a degree of trust for the other guy who was affiliated with Alpo, but he was working for Michael Frey Salters, you feel me? And they banged him out or whatever, you feel me? So Michael Frey Salters ended up getting murdered and that's how he ended up getting killed by Alpo. You know what I mean? Now, next up, 
I want to talk about the Alpo and Dementio situation. And while I'm on that, yo, bless Michael Frey Salters. If Alpo's really dead, bless Alpo. And bless Dementio as well. But check it. So a guy by the name of Dementio Benton, who was a large D-Rug dealer, a Dominican guy from New York City, from Brooklyn, New York. And he was getting money in New York, but he ended up expanding out to Washington, D.C. as well. And um, Dementio, I think he went to um, Sean Branch's projects and he was kind of cool with them and he was getting money down there in Montana Terrace. You feel me? And um, Sean Branch was kind of fond of Dementio, according to him. You feel me? And a lot of people say that Dementio was a really good dude. You feel me? Um, I heard that he was kind of arrogant a little bit, but I heard he was a good dude who was solid. You feel me? So anyway, this is what I heard that happened with Alpo and Dementio that, you know, niggas be fond of the same females and they be doing certain shit, you feel me? So, um, you know, a lot of females that look good, they be in the same circle with big time kingpins, you know, everybody's looking for something, you feel me? So niggas is looking for pussy and bitches is looking for money. You know how I go. So that shit go together, you feel me? So anyway, um, Dementio, according to Alpo, he said that Dementio had bad mouthed his wife and he already had a bad taste in his mouth about Dementio. And then he had had some type of verbal confrontation or something but it wasn't nothing to where Dementio thought it was time to take it to war he just was trying to look past it because most willy niggas that's getting a lot of money they try to look past beef because dollars make sense you feel me so they be trying to look past it and I guess Dementio ended up trying to look past it but remember that Alpo Martinez was affiliated with Wayne Perry, who had allegedly 100 bodies. And then Little Pop was Alpo's little man that intro introduced um, Wayne Perry to Alpo. This is Shorty Pop. Now, everybody know about Shorty Pop from D.C. And if you don't know, go check my videos on Shorty Pop. Because he was a straight murderer too, you feel me? So Alpo was using all of this type of shit as leverage. And y'all know the legend of the shit that they was having a basketball game. You know, because most Willie niggas have basketball teams or they bet on, you know, the basketball game that's going on or whatever. So they ended up having a basketball game in D.C. And, um... Dementio was at the basketball game and Alpo had put a plot together to murder Dementio, allegedly. So he was telling Little Pop and some other shooters, when you see me shaking his hand, just come up and give him the business. You know what I mean? You know the business. So Alpo ended up shaking Dementio's hand and it's alleged that while he was holding his hand, somebody just rolled up. And it's alleged that this was Little Pop. I'm not saying this for factual. That's what people were saying in the streets. That Shorty Pop rolled up and just blicked them all in his face. You feel me? And just killed Dementio. Brutally just murdered him. But they was people was asking Alpo in the interview, wasn't you scared to hold his hand? He was like, nah, my, my little man was right up on him. And they just gave it to him. And he was like, once you see the first murder, you're not scared of no murders and this and that. Y'all know how that shit go. All right. So another dude that Alpo, because y'all know that Alpo Martinez, he has allegedly been, no, he been charged with federal murders, 14 um, murders that he copped out with the federal government with. And that was part of his plea agreement to tell them about the 14 murders and other things that he was uh, 
involved in with Wayne Perry and them. So that's how he ended up becoming an informant on Wayne Perry and many other people. But like he said, he felt he did what was right for himself. I'm not justifying what the fuck he did, but that's what he did. But another one that I want to talk about is Andre Tank Johnson. And look, you see that they said Michael Frey Salters was a good dude. Um, Dementio was a good dude. And they saying that Andre Tank Johnson was a really good dude. And in Alpo's own words, he was reading up from Andre Tank Johnson. Andre Tank Johnson was getting some shit from Alpo, but he was spending like 400000 with him a month. And Alpo was doing some dirty shit, just in my perspective, fucking that man, girl. And because that man spending 400000 with you, if the man spending $400,000 with me, I don't even think about his girl. All I think about is building better relationships with him and niggas like that that's spending 400000 with me. Because remember, dollars make sense. All that other shit is secondary. You feel me? So anyway, he was dealing with um, the dude Ears of Christ and Andre Tank Johnson. And they were spending 400000 a month with this guy, Alpo Martinez. You feel me? But he was still sticking dick to Andre Tank Johnson's girl. And she dirty too if she was doing that because she wasn't loyal to um, Andre Tank Johnson. And loyalty is everything. Niggas just don't know the meaning, you know what I mean? But um, check it. So um, the dude Big Head Gary ended up having beef with Andre Tank Johnson because Andre Tank Johnson was fucking Gary's girl. Now check it, Gary said he had a million, two million that Alpo even confirmed. Alpo had millions and Andre Tank Johnson had millions. I don't know what Frey had, Michael Frey Soltis, but he had money too. But Andre Tank Johnson definitely had some millions and so did Alpo and Gary. So fucking each other's girls, that's just some crazy shit. But I heard that Andre Tank Johnson was already fucking Gary's girl. And Gary found out about it. Now, y'all know Big Head Gary. He was affiliated with Alpo, too. Alpo ended up killing him. But he was a big-time drug dealer from D.C., too. And a lot of people didn't know until he started shining when he got with Alpo. Because he was keeping low like my company. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. So, anyway, um, he called Alpo. Um, This is Big Head Gary. And he told Gary, he told Alpo, yo, this nigga's fucking my girl. I want to just kill him. But Alpo was like, nah, put a freeze on that shit because the nigga spending 400000 a month with me. So he was trying to keep the peace, keep it neutral to where he could get his money. So Alpo, in his own words, ended up talking to Andre Tank Johnson and Is the Christ confirmed this. And Is, I mean, um, Andre gave Alpo his word that he wasn't going to fuck son's girl no more. You feel me? But he told his man, is the Christ, I'm going to fuck her one more time. So he fucked her one more time. And he said, bye, Felicia. You feel me? And then the bitch didn't like the that. And her reaction was bad. So she ended up letting Gabby know that she was allegedly having a baby by Andre Tank Johnson. Yeah, so like I was telling you, she ended up um, saying she was allegedly pregnant by Andre Tank Johnson. But you know, Tank was like, nah, you kicking game. I ain't fucking with that. And he didn't even really respond to her, whatever. So she ended up telling Big Head Gary about the situation. And then he caught Alpo again. And he was like, I'm going to kill him this time. So Alpo, knowing this, Alpo said in one of his videos that he didn't know that Gary was going to really kill Tank. And it was all Gary's fault. But just read between the lines on this shit. Because he said, Gary said, I'm going to kill him. And Alpo said, all right, come with me. Because the nigga getting ready to spend a nice amount of money with me. You know what I mean? So he brought Gary. So why would you bring Gary if you know this nigga feel all fucked up about Andre Tank Johnson and the nigga spending 400000 a month with you? You feel me? Why would you do that? So Alpo was fucking... um. 
Andre Tank Johnson's girl. And he really wanted her. He was really liking her. He was fond of her or whatever. So he was like, could just hold that thought for a minute, but you'll check it. So they went and Alpo was meeting up with Andre Tank Johnson. And um, they was in the truck or whatever. And then Andre Tank Johnson went back to like the second or third row of seats to get the money. And when he came back to give the money to Alpo, according to Alpo Martinez, Gary just opened the door and just bust the nigga in his head. And then Alpo, according to him, he was like, why you did that? Why you did that? Like, he didn't know what was going on. But y'all read between the lines. So anyway, Alpo ended up taking the 270000 that Andre Tank Johnson was, you know, spending with him that day. So he took the two hundred and seventy. But then Alpo got a video where he's like, where he's speaking about this. And he said, I took the 270000 but I also had the girl all to myself. That shit right there sound lame to me. You also had the girl all to yourself, but you lost a motherfucker that was spending 400000 a month with you for a girl. When you got your own wife and you got more other bitches, what's wrong with these dudes? But that's his life. And the, the dude, Andre Tank Johnson, who was a good dude, ended up losing his life for something trivial like that. But if you really look at it, and no disrespect to Andre Tank Johnson, but if you give somebody your word on something, all a man got is his word. And y'all know I'm in the 5% nation of Islam. I've been since I was like 13, 14. I knew 120 lessons. And 11th degree in the one of 40, 14 lessons says, have you not heard that your word shall be born? And then the answer says, yes, my word is born and born is life. And I'll give my life if my word shall fail. So maybe because he didn't keep his word and he went back and he popped the chick one more time, maybe that caused his death. Just looking at it from another perspective, because I like to look at it from all perspectives. You feel me? Not just be biased in the situation. So when I come at y'all, I give y'all the real shit. And I also tell y'all in certain parts that this is my perception of it. But that's just three people that Alpo allegedly had something to do with getting murdered. And I just wanted to touch in on that. But he got 14 murders allegedly. So... Y'all get in the comments and tell me who the other people was that he allegedly murdered. Keep low. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, so check it. Another situation I wanted to mention. Another person that Alpo Martinez allegedly had a hand in his murder was a guy by the name of Matthew Blake. Now, Matthew Blake was a fly motherfucker on some real shit. Because you know how motherfuckers be way ahead of their time? Well, Matthew Blake was way ahead of his time because he was really getting to that bag. And you know the name of my company is Keep Low. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. That's K-double-P-L-O. But if you keep low and you never tell, people would never know. And that's what Matthew Blake was doing. Only a few people knew that he was getting major, major money the way he was getting money. Check it. Um, Matthew Blake was getting so much money, he had a store that was selling Gucci and Prada, all the real shit, and he was getting money like that, you feel me? And I heard that Alpo Martinez, Alpo Martinez was jealous of him, allegedly, was jealous of, you know, um, Matthew Blake, because he was fly, he was down low, he was getting money, I heard he was the type of motherfucker that you really couldn't tempt with no girl because he had his own girl and he had his own shit going on. You feel me? And um, loyalty is everything because just recently when Alpo was allegedly murdered on Halloween of last year, which was 2021, that his wife started doing interviews and news articles saying how karma you know karma that's the universal principle of cause and effect for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction so she said that alpo you know everybody thought he was living on borrowed time anyway so she was like karma caught him for what he did to matthew blake because it's alleged that he killed matthew blake out of pure jealousy 
that man wasn't having no business dealings with Alpo. He didn't have no beef with Alpo. And this is what the streets are saying. He didn't have no beef with Alpo. But Alpo despised him so much as a person that he got his little man pop to just go give that man the business. And that's super crazy to me. But you know how the streets is. All fear and love and war. And that's how some that shit goes sometimes. You feel me? Dig me? But that's four people that Alpo um, allegedly had something to do with their murder or he murdered them out of the 14 people. Now, we know another one was Big Head Gary, where Big Head Gary had had beef with um, jawbreaking some other kids. And Alpo and Wayne Perry and them, they called them and they told them, we see the guy that you had beef with. And Gary came, but Gary had ended up telling somebody that Alpo had a big deal to get six million worth of that stuff. So, and I just want to say that for educational purposes, them bricks. And um, so when Wayne Perry ended up telling Alpo, I heard you got a deal for six million worth, and you asked Gary to give you some money, and like soon as y'all pick it up, he gonna do you. So. They ended up putting his ass in the cross, got him in the car, he was riding around. Alpo's man in the back gave it to Gary in the back of his head. They drug him through the motherfucking woods, took off all his clothes, and left his ass there like that. But yo, you see how that karma will catch you, man? That's why you gotta do good deeds if that's what you into. But don't think karma's fake because it's the universal principle of cause and effect. But that's five people that Alpo had something to do with their murder. And look, he was charged with 14 murders. So get in the comment section and tell me who the other people are. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Keep low all day and I'm live in the garden. If you don't know me, I do videos on street legends. I appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel and go to www.keeploproductions. Like the page. Check out the Keep Low shirts. Order the Keep Low shirts and get this video a thumbs up. You dig? And hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I drop more content. Live stream to God. Love y'all. Keep loaded company. Peace.